Hi everyone, I welcome you to the channel once again. FK Diaries making entertainment very easy and very understandable. Today's episode on time, men of God is one man of God who God has used him. He cast the word. And today we are going to talk about um, as Christians, you know, are we obligated to forgive and forget or are we to forgive but not forget? I know those watching us, um, this has been some of the questions that you would like to ask, but. Um, by the grace of God, the man of God that who is going to assist us in this explanation um, is going to help us. Before that, we'll go for a short commercial, but when we come back, we we'll continue. Joe, sure, welcome you back once again. FK that is making it very easy and very understandable. And the man of God that I'm going to present to you is no other man of very a renowned a well esteemed man of god called motivator joel uh man of god i greet you you are welcome thank you um by the way uh when we say motivator jewel who is he a little intro about yourself okay motivator jewel is a, a young man of god the leader of rescue operation ministry who we aim to present the word of god to the whole world irrespective of the place or the number of people our aim is to send the word of god as the bible commands us to do that's motivated you okay. okay um um and we thank you for honoring my invitation we thank you um today um there has been this um question that baffled some of you know christians around the country like as christians are we obligated to forgive and forget or to forgive but not forget well thank you thank you for the opportunity as christians we are to forgive and forget because the creator that's god the one who created us when we sin or when we err and then we ask him for forgiveness he forgives and after forgiving he forget but the bible says when we err and when we ask him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all forms of unrighteousness. God forgives and forgets. He does not remember our sins anymore. Since we humble ourselves, come to him, we come down, break ourselves and ask him for forgiveness. And look at the Bible in the book of Genesis, the story of Joseph and his brethren. You can see that the brethren of Joseph afflicted him so much after he told them the dreams that God gave him. And then when Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt, the brothers came to him. Now, he remembered because he had the Adamic nature. That's the human nature. So, irrespective of the kind of spirit you are, uh, sorry, you have in you or how, I mean, I mean, deep you are in Christ. Because you have that Adamic nature, you are a human being. So, you remember some things. But the spirit of the Lord in you will make you forget because Joseph forgot the sins of his brethren after forgiving them. That's why he was able to embrace them told them to go and bring his father and they all dwell in Egypt. So for someone to forgive and forget, it takes the spirit of God. Without the spirit of God, you know, the Holy Spirit, you will not forgive. Because someone with the Holy Spirit, when someone steps on your toes, you will willingly forgive the person. But as a carnal man, it is difficult. So what Christians or whosoever is watching should understand is that to forgive and forget depends on how deep you are in Christ. Because if I am a shallow Christian, when someone stamp, stamp on my toes or whatever, I might forgive the person, but it will be difficult for me to forget what the person did unto me. So it takes the spirit of the Lord to forgive. But as a Christian, you are to forgive and forget. Okay. Um, by the way, when we say sin, how will you explain it? Sin. Okay, sin by translation simply means Satan imparted nature. As in abbreviation form. S means Satan. I means imparted. And N means nature. What does it mean? That means Satan in you. The nature of Satan has been implanted in you. According to the book of 1 John chapter 3, the Bible says, Sin is the transgression of the law. So whosoever transgresses against the law, that means I've sinned. So God gave us commandment, he has given us precepts, statutes to follow. Now if you err, if you do not go according to all these statutes and commandments of God, that means you have sinned. So sin simply means the transgression of the law. The law of man or the law of God. Now let's take Ghana or any country that you are for example. Now we have rules and regulations, the constitution has aligned the rules and regulations, the laws of the country. If you go contrary to that 
when you go to the court and stand before the judge, you'll be jailed if you are found guilty of that act. So sin is transgression of the law according to the Bible. Okay. Um, based on your statement, um, is sin the only thing that can cause separation between man and God? Very true. Sin is the only element that causes separation be between man and God. Because in the book of Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says when man sinned, what did man do? God told man after planting man in the garden of Eden not to touch the fruit of good, of knowledge, of evil and evil. But man touched that fruit. Meaning man has transgressed against the law of God and that caused separation. Now from then, it was difficult for man to get close to God. And after that, God in his own right senses, wanted to reconcile with man, as highlighted in the book of Hebrews. And then because of that, he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to act as an advocate, as a mediator between us and him, so that he can reconcile us. So the early element, or the only element that can separate man from God is sin. Yes. Okay. Um, also, like, is every sin be sin, or some sin are uh, heavier than others? Every sin is a sin. When you read the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12, I think verse 2, the Bible says, Since we have been encompassed with such a great witness of Christians, of people around the world, now when you see the word now, we say Christianity is dominant. About 70% of the world population are Christians. The Bible says, We should do away with weight. Every weight that easily beset us, every sin that easily beset us. Some of us do think that there are some sins that are higher than others. No, every sin is a sin. Now, when Moses got angry because he was, uh, I mean, I may be manipulated with anger, the anger prevented him from getting to the promised land. So, every sin is sin. If you insult, it is a sin. It's a breach from God. Because God has asked us not to insult, not to engage in bribery and corruption, not to fight our fellow brethren. We need to forgive. So if you have any nature of sin in you, not only fornication, not only stealing, not only abortion, not only idolatry, not only drunkenness, no. Every sin is a sin before the sight of God. So in the Bible, why is that God stated that as for fornication, we need to run from but They know include other sins. Okay, the reason is that when you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 to 20, and then chapter 6, verse 17 downwards, the Bible is making us aware that our body is a living temple of God. Now, most Christians or most people do think that the church of God or the temple of God is the church house. No, as we are here, here is a place that we come to meet God. But as the church is closed, all those who are out, this place can be used as a kitchen. This place can be used as a study room for students. But when we come here, we call it the church house. The church or the temple of God is our body. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and then chapter 6, verse 17 and 18 downwards respectively, make us aware that we should flee fornication because every sin that a man doeth is not against the body. It's not involved with the body. But the only sin that a man doeth is that affect the body is fornication and god warns us a lot in the book of genesis chapter 39 when um pharaoh's wife sorry potiphar's wife wanted to have an affair with joseph joseph ran why because joseph said how can i do such a great wickedness against god in the bible when david went in with Bathsheba after fornicating god punished him God punished. So the Lord is highlighting this because it is something that when you do even when you ask those who are married after engaging in sex with the uh, partners or their spouse. Sometimes that kind of shyness is there. Anyone who's, who has engaged in fornication before will testify to that. So the reason why God is saying that is that because it affects your body. It is the only sin that when you do, the Holy Spirit will depart from you because the Holy Spirit dwells in our body. So fornication is something that God really hates. Not that he hates this sin and does not hate the other sins. Every sin is sin as you have already said. But for fornication, if you don't take care it will, I mean, it will disgrace you. When you, those of us who listen to the radio, those afternoon programs we hear, that great men of God came down, great people have come down because of what? Fornication. So the Bible is alighting this. You can read that verse, First Corinthians chapter 6 and then chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 downwards respectively. The Bible says, flee fornication because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And whosoever that destroys the body or the temple of God shall be punished according to the Bible. Okay, um, as Christians, are we in the position to condemn those who offend us? 
Oh no, you need not to condemn anyone because we are not perfect. But God says we should be perfect. And how can we be perfect? By getting aligned with the word of God, studying it in the book of Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, and then the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, Moses told Joshua that Joshua, do not let this book of the Lord depart out of thy mouth. Now, the, your constant meditating in the word will make you perfect. But as human, as I said, we have the Adamic nature. There's a possibility of you erring. So when your Christian brother or your fellow Christian falls, you know to condemn them. The Bible says we should help one another. We should bear one another's burden. The book of 1 Corinthians and then in the book of Acts, it highlights that. Now, Paul, as an apostle in the Bible, is an example. When someone is, after rebooking the person, he drags the person to himself. Now, rebooking doesn't mean judgment. No. It's correction. You correct them. The Bible or the word of God does not judge us. It corrects us lead us to the path so as christian you not to condemn anyone if your fellow christian has backslide if your fellow christian has fallen you need to be the helper to pull them up don't condemn them you need to rebook them make them aware of the wrongs and the sins that they did not do right and then you bring them back in alignment with christ so why is it that um many christians find it difficult to you know for forget other people's sins but yet they say they are forgive them but they haven't forget the reason is that as i've already alighted because of the adamic nature in us you see sometimes someone will do something negative to you and then you become very very sad and mostly these things comes from our own i mean close people close relative it can be a friend or whatever but without the spirit of god the reason why some people cannot for, forget after forgiving is without the spirit of god and if you say you're forgiving and you have not forgotten that means you have not forgiven because immediately you see the person that sin that the person or that wrong that the person did to you you still remember that means you've not forgiven but forgiveness moves with forgetfulness God, after forgiving us our sins, he forget that. That's what the Bible says. God will forget our sins. He will throw away everything and he will draw us closer to him. So the reason why they are not able to forget is that they do not possess the spirit of God. That's the Holy Spirit. Allowing yourself for the Holy Spirit to manipulate over you, to take over you, for the Holy Spirit to, to I mean, come into your heart and then take over you means you have that power to forget everything. Because the Bible highlights in the book of John chapter 14, chapter 15 and 16, that when Jesus Christ was going, because he doesn't want to leave us as orphans, he said he will give us the Holy Spirit who will one be our comforter, to who will guide us and teach us all truth. So the truth is forgive and forget. That the truth is not forgive, but don't forget. So f those who are not able to forget are those who are not with the power of the Holy Spirit. The, my advice for them is that they need to pray and ask God to implant in them the Spirit. God has promised to give us the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 verse number 27, Joel chapter 2 verse 28. So many places in the Bible we said he will give us the Spirit. If only we will ask. So ask for the Spirit of God to be able to forget whatever sin that someone has done to you. Okay. Um, among these two, to forget and to forgive, which one? Which one is very difficult to explain in your life as a true Christian? And they are all difficult. <laughs> because as a Christian, when someone has said you, let's say a close Christian, someone that you never thought would have done that, and when that person does that to you, you see, it is very difficult to forgive. To forgive is difficult. And then to forget is difficult. But as Christians, God is pointing that onto us to forgive and forget. Why? Because in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 30 when Jesus Christ was teaching us prayer, he said forgive us our trespass as we forgive those. So meaning if you cannot forgive the Bible highlights in the book of Matthew and in the book of Luke, now they all give different account that this unforgiving servant when he was owing his master about 10 pence, the Bible says the master forgave him and then told him i've forgiven you because when the master was collecting the money he knelt down he cried but when his fellow christian i mean his fellow brother or his fellow servant also was i mean indebted to him the bible says when he saw his fellow christian or his fellow brother he held him at the neck and said give me my money but the brother asked him for forgiveness but he did not forgive because it was difficult to him because he was a carnal man but when you get into the spirit, when the spirit of the Lord takes over you, when you are a genuine Christian, I mean a genuine, not someone who is a church goer, someone who has Christ in him, someone who is born again. Mark 4, Nicodemus, born again. That person finds it easily to forgive and forget. 
but it is difficult in the nature of man. It is difficult according to the carnal man. Difficult to forgive. That's why when someone asks him, the person will just take egg, curse the person. Because he does not understand why someone has said me. So you curse the person. But as a Christian, you leave everything. The Bible says God is the avenger of sin. He will bring the vengeance at the time that is due. But you forget, you forgive, and then let everything go. That's it. Okay. Uh, what one word will you say um, based on what you have said so far to our viewers, those who are watching? Well, what I will say is that um, one, forgiveness means letting go and forgetting means leaving everything. So, as a Christian, wherever you are watching us from, whatever thing that someone has done to you, do not make it overcome you. Take away that kind of, I mean, I mean, uh, enviness, that kind of uh, hatred in you. Throw it away. Because someone to, for, for someone to hate us, it should have been Christ. Because of the sins that we die. See, even we say we have Christ, but sometimes we err. Yes, so when we come to the throne of grace, he forgives us. So irrespective of whatever anyone has done to you, forgive them. And then as Christians, we need to be so conscious about fornication. Not only fornication, all other sins are sins. But be very careful of fornication because things that will bring your light down, that will bring your oil, your anointing down, is fornication. Read history, great men of God, they all engage in that and they came down. But if you stand for God, if you focus on Christ, don't be a shallow Christian, be a deep Christian, wherever you are. Don't be just a churchgoer, be a Christian. A Christian without I A N. Where we say Christian, when we spell Christian, it's Christ and I A N. Now, when you take out the Christ, it's left with I A N. The abbreviation means I am nothing. That means without Christ, you are nothing. John chapter 15, it says, Abide in me and I in you. Let's abide in Christ. Let's not be just churchgoers, but true Christians. Because the Bible says, At the last day, only true believers shall be raptured. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in fact, we appreciate your time. We appreciate the knowledge that you have shared so far. Um, by the way, do you have any social handles so that those who are watching you, they might follow you to hear some of you know the great insight that God has um, deposited in you. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Motivator Jewel does um, Facebook Live every morning, but sometimes when we are not able to do, we I mean inform them. It is called Rescue Morning. From Friday, uh, Monday to Friday, 5, 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. With word, prayer, worship. And then um, you can also contact me on Facebook, Jiwa Yabu and Jiwa Furi. All those are accounts are active. TikTok at Yabu and Jiwa 1234. And then on WhatsApp, you can contact me on 59 That's my active WhatsApp line. And then my ministry is Rescue the Perishing ministry we meet we pray we teach the word we help ourselves whenever we are in need you can join us by contacting me on whatsapp and then we take it from there god bless you very much and brother god also bless you and i pray that may god increase you and make your work progresses thank you very much everyone that is watching thank you um fk that is making it very easy and very nice like i said um and i guess you know you will really enjoy the conversation and you have get some insight and a little education and you're going to you know practice what um, the man of god shared with us fk diaries see you again goodbye